Rick started out much as the rest of us did, an inquisitive child from the very start. But unlike the rest of us with visions of toys dancing in our heads, Rick's visions drove him to create the toys. Probably uh, around two years of age, he uh, started getting interested in games and, and uh, making his own little small games and always trying to figure out things. We couldn't keep him contained anywhere. One of the first electronic inventions I did was um, I built a, a talking cuckoo clock for my mother for her birthday. And uh, it looked like a regular cuckoo clock. You had to pull the weights on it and so forth. But on the hour, it would, instead of cuckooing, it would tell you the time in the day. And on the half hour, it would tell you the time and give you a quote from a famous philosopher. And then when he was in high school, he made a robot, and he was way ahead of himself at that time. He uh, invented Fenork, and he was quite a robot. Rick continued to create the visions that he saw in his dreams. As high school became college, his inventions amazed his friends as they were way ahead of their time. While still in college, Rick signed on with Hughes. He was the very first non-degreed engineer that they had ever hired. And then it was on to Mattel. But it wasn't long before he felt the need to form his own company. He called it Advanced Microcomputer Systems. And here, he was able to create a new kind of toy, one that would revolutionize the toy industry. It was here that the seeds of a dream were planted that would eventually grow to change the world of electronic games forever. Since 1979, I've, I've had this, this dream that I've been working toward of, of creating a world an environment that's so real that you you forget and and you stop distinguishing between what's real and what isn't it became known as the halcyon technology and as as we were developing it we would get these side projects along the way and and one of one of the big side projects was dragon's lair dragon's lair gained worldwide attention with appearances on pm magazine and even the evening news, Rick gained some fame as well. With his newfound confidence, he continued his development of Halcyon. Raiders versus Chargers on an autumn afternoon? No, this is a video game. Gone are the dots and squiggles of the Pong and Pac-Man era. These images are stored on a laser video disc system called Halcyon, designed by Rick Dyer. Football isn't the only option. There's a wide variety of software ready for the system. Most is animated, like the Thayer's Quest fantasy game. But all are interactive. The viewer decides what happens next. As you can see, the Halcyon technology was perfected. But because of a lack of affordable video disc players at the time, it was never made available to the public. Now, while Rick likes to describe Dragon's Lair as an accident along the way to Halcyon, his humanoid, or power-sized project, was a creation of necessity. Most of the profits from Dragon's Lair were now gone, spent on the Halcyon project. Now he needed capital to continue to pursue his dream. What I decided to do uh, as an outgrowth of, of Halcyon was to, to create an interactive piece of fitness equipment. And the reason is I saw a market out there, the, the, the club industry, uh, that was a parallel to the coin-op and that and it was very backwards in technology so what I did was essentially took a trainer and put it into the equipment the tra the equipment talked to you it knew who you were it interacted with you it set the weight it did everything that a personal trainer was only they were robots Rick sold his power size project to Livingwell Corporation for a considerable sum and today, these talking mechanical exercise experts can be found working lazy humans out worldwide. They seem to be especially popular in Japan and Europe, where they, of course, speak Japanese, German, as well as English. Rick's latest project is today setting new records in the coin-op world. As unbelievable as it may seem, the project known as Hologram was also a creation of Rick Dyer's unique thinking. And how it came to be is also quite a story. It was new. It was different. You know, it wasn't like a regular video game. It blew us away. We had no idea it was going to turn out this great. 
Rick actually discovered the technology for hologram at a trade show and immediately licensed it from with design in mind. Taking that Japanese technology and turning it into a time travel game proved to be quite a challenge. We developed very sophisticated techniques using matting, uh, costuming, colors. There were so many things that we had to learn. Uh, we had, and on top of that, we had to audition a th close to a thousand actors. We had to teach them how to act, not only as an uh, acting in a hologram for format, but how to act as a cartoon character. After months of shooting and planning, Hologram finally made its debut. And if the reaction from the coin-op industry is any indication, it too is on its way to becoming a mega hit. It too may end up in the Smithsonian next to its predecessor, Dragon Slayer. Sega Corporation placed an order worth $18 million retail before the game was even finished.